get into let's get into the, the the one that kind of you know started started more conversation with, with you and I. Um, you wrote an article, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, um, that got a lot of pushback from the fitness industry. And for the most part, yeah. um, the industry, you know, a lot of people who read the article actually were very supportive in the industry once they realized what the content of it really was and what the aim of it really was. But the um, the idea, I think the title was, um, you know, the fitness business is not essential. Was what the title, the first title was. I think you adapted it a yeah. little bit to soften it or to make it a little bit more positive in terms of what you were saying. Um, but you you put that piece out. You got you know you got a lot of pushback. Um, and I was really interested when we talked offline about actually what motivated you to do that, like what the, what you were seeing that 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 prompted that that actual response. And it's different than I think what people in the industry might have thought was the motivation yeah. in, and, uh, and, and that's it. So, so why don't we start there? Like, what was it that you saw or what, what posts were you seeing from people that actually made you want to sit down and, and just write that piece? All right. So the biggest one was, you know, the title, you know, start with that. Uh, the fitness industry oh, is not next. essential. <laughs> What's that? That was my next question. How, how did you choose the title? Yeah. But let's start there. So, uh, you know, originally, so I started, you know, the fitness industry is not essential was basically, uh, you know, as one person put it, you know, more than one, you know, it was a very clickbaity title, you know, listen, no one's going to read an article saying, I think fitness needs to be better and help more people. No one's reading that. So I did put a very controversial title out there because the argument is fitness is essential. And that, so with that being said, then I would see the same people saying fitness is essential. This is how I got the entire article going. What sparked it going was seeing personal trainers saying fitness is essential and then mocking somebody who they saw at the grocery store who's obese with a cart full of crappy food and a mask on. And they'd say, you know, fitness is essential. The way you're buying your food and what you're doing is not, but at least you have a mask on to be healthy. And I'm like, you know what? You're, you're shaming people. And as fitness professionals, we're not going to be taken seriously. And you've heard me say this already in the podcast. We're not doing things to be taken seriously. And so if we keep on doing things like this, and somebody can turn around and say, well, Matt, you know, you title an article saying fitness is not essential, and you're a fitness professional, how can we take you seriously? And I get that. And the purpose of the article was to write a title that will get people incensed honestly and click on it and go what are you talking about i had one person who sent me a who wrote me a, a comment on one of my social feeds you know you're a fraud you don't know what you're talking about laced into me and when i went to respond to it on the page and hit enter the comment was no longer available so i sent them a private message saying hey what's happened i was really looking to, to discuss this in an open forum he yeah. said well actually i got mad at the title and read the first line and then laid into you and then my wife said, you know, maybe you should read the whole article. And I read it and you're right. And I was wrong. And I'm so sorry. We need to change the, the, the conversation to make fitness essential. So the purpose of it was looking at people who are fitness professionals saying, basically, um, you know, I saw one person post a meme of a very, very overweight woman hoarding all this junk food with a mask on and says, at least I'm healthy. Well, you know, that's that to me as a fitness professional who got into it at 256 pounds yeah right that would have turned me off so you're telling me as a fitness professional that i'm not your client you're gonna make fun of me and um you know you're not essential because i i'm scared to go to the gym and i know i need help there's not a single person honest to god who is overweight who doesn't know they don't need help they know they need help they know where that it's hard yeah. and we need to try to change that topic so the purpose of the article was to say, hey, we're not essential because let's be realistic. And we've talked about the numbers already. You know, 17.5% of people in North America have a gym membership. Okay. At, you know, if we were to poll all those people, how many of them actually go three times a week or more? Yeah. About 8 or 9%. I think so the, numbers, we, the numbers I heard from a doctor recently from the latest research is 17. That's gym members. And obviously there's people that do it on their yeah. own is about 15% right. of the population does the prescribed amount of healthy activity. So that means 85% of the population is not active enough, you know, week over week. Right. And that's an active enough, right? Again, they're going by the standards of what's active, but 20 minute walk three times a week, right? We know there's more and there's a big difference. And before I wrote the article, 
I was putting out questions on Facebook and LinkedIn yep. saying, that. hey, what are your thoughts on this? And I actually polled and they were saying, you know, I'm asking fitness professionals and just everybody else on here, what's important to you? And somebody actually who I really respect wrote on, the, uh, on my page saying, Matt, there's a big difference between being fit and being healthy. And went into this long, I'm like, oh my God. And they were right because I was lumping in fitness and health into one word. Yeah. Being fit, you know, when you watch, and I would joke about this with a lot of people years ago, watch bodybuilders, you know, they're fit. Let's see how fast they can do a hundred yard dash. Right. Or if they Let's see what, <laughs> right. You know, like, you know, and, and I'm not knocking it. It's, it's yeah. a discipline. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but is that, but are we all healthy? Right. I look at fitness, the, the fitness professionals in, in general, was I healthy when I have a family and I'm going to bed by the time I get my oldest one, you know, settled at, at 16 years of age and it's 1130 at night and I'm waking up at 430 in the morning and I'm teaching my classes, trying to get my clients in and running around the city to do my other jobs and grabbing food on the go because I don't have time to prep it. That's a do as I say, not as I do. I wasn't healthy. Yeah. I was gaining weight left, right, and center. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't working out. I wasn't the picture you picture of health and fitness because I wasn't able to do it. You know, so that what spurred the article was getting, you know, upset with trainers and then looking at all these businesses who are fighting again to get open. We need to get open and I get it. And I said in the article, fitness is an essential business to the owner. It's their business. Of course, it's their baby. Of course, it's essential to them. But when you're trying to get people in who are nervous and scared, right, and you open your doors, not everyone's going to go in. So we had to change the purpose of the article was to change the topic of the conversation where we're not essential, but we are essential, right? We're essential. We are your first line. And we know this. Being healthy is your first line of defense against so many illnesses, right? We know that people who are healthy and, and, and exercising and eating right and sleeping well and getting their proper nutrients have a better chance of fighting off, not just this virus, but all virus. Yeah. Right. So we know that, you know, years ago, you know, I was adopted. So my wife would say, find your birth parents. You'll know your medical history. And I'm like, what are they going to tell me? Uh, the doctor's going to say, eat healthy, sleep, right. Get exercise. Nothing else I can do after that. If it's genetic. Yeah. Right, and do the best you can. So the conversation had to change where we needed to get people talking. And that was the purpose of writing that. I wanted people to talk. We know we're, to, we're, we're preaching to the choir for those 17%, 18%, 15% who go and get exercise three times a week or more. We know that they're coming, right? We know that if we opened up, right, if we didn't, if we closed for a week and maybe have the pandemic, we know that 20% of our members would have come back. No problem. No worries. And probably another 20 to 30 on top of that. Right. That's just the nature of the beast. But how do we get that 85% of people who are going and they're shopping because they're uneducated. So they're buying pre-made foods or boxed foods. You know, we all know it's cheaper. You can go to McDonald's or, or other fast food joints and pick up, dinner for, for your family of five for 60 bucks. Well, you can also get a really good, healthy couple of days food for $60, uh, you know, if you buy it properly. Yeah. So we have to educate people and get people healthy. So the purpose of that topic and that title and the whole article was mad at trainers for shaming people and making them feel bad about their lifestyle choices. Um, Cause I know a lot of trainers who have awful lifestyle choices. Yeah. Um, and then, as an industry, get us to talk and say, we need the 85% in. We need, to, those are the people we need to help. Those are the ones who people, you know, trainers in the last couple of months have been saying, they're going to be the ones who are going to get this virus and they're going to be the ones who are going to be dragging the hospital systems through and costing yep. us taxpayers money. Okay, so help them. Don't help them. Help them get healthy. And that was the purpose of that. And honestly, you know, the first line of the article was, don't jump on me. First four lines, don't jump on yeah. me. Because I did on purpose. I knew I was going to be jumped on. It was done on purpose. But it was to get a conversation going, right? Yeah. We've had five months as an industry to work on getting people back in the gym. And not just our members. People should feel comfortable, feel safe when they're there. 
and we need to get that conversation going as to what we are going to do to make them comfortable and safe yeah. and healthy. And at the same time, get those other people saying, Hey, you were scared. You bought a Peloton. You started working out on YouTube. Well, let's help you inside the gym and get you in front of instructors who can give you form and technique, even if it's once a week. And you're also going to do your YouTube videos. Like there's got to be a balance. Yeah. Right. And that was the purpose of the article. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a, again, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to dive into there. Um, and uh, I mean, it starts with, it starts with, and this is a bigger issue with social media, right? Which is social media is everyone projecting the best versions of themselves. And so when you talk about the fitness industry projecting it, and, and I've seen this in friends um, and, and, and other people close to me who, who follow this, um, a lot of the people you, that are followed on Instagram and everything, they're followed because of how great they look that's the type of person that gets a lot of following and whether it's genetics, whether it's enhanced in unnatural ways or whether they're super disciplined and everything else, which is, which is what, what a lot of them are as well. It's not necessarily a realistic picture for that right. 85%. It's, it's what the 15% aspire to and everyone's competing for, but it's not that. And, and that's just, that's a bit of the nature of it. And that goes to the topic that you kind of hit on, which is, you know, the fitness industry has been, there's a lot of focus on aesthetic and there's definitely it's time and it's place for that. And, and I've definitely come, sure. to, I've come to uh, respect like bodybuilding and that side of things a lot more, the more of the real high end people in that world that I've gotten to know mm -hmm. and just how much science actually goes into it for them and how much discipline really goes into it. Um, you know, as a former, as a former professional athlete, like I can fully respect that, that dedication and a lot of the stuff that goes there, but it's again, goes back to public perception of when everything they're seeing is that, that Jack super fit, person and that's not that's not what they are and that's not necessarily what they aspire to do and that's going to have its place that aesthetic appeal but really the broader category is health and if you look at the bottom line in numbers again and this is something that i i talk about and i talk about even with investors and trainer plus and where we're going with the platform the healthcare market um the fitness market is about 35 billion in north america u.s north america the healthcare market is 3.3 trillion it's a hundred right. times larger right and and you not only that, so it's a way bigger market, the amount of percentage of that healthcare market that's spent on preventative medicine, by some estimates, it's, it's at most 2%, but it's most like better estimates have it less than 1%. And that's on like mostly genetic screening and things like that, that's preventative, as opposed to activity and fitness as preventative care, even though we know it's the number one form of, of, of preventative care and treatment in a lot of cases is getting active and getting moving. So when, when it comes down to talking to the fitness industry about that, like the opportunity of engaging that are 85%, it's also the opportunity of, you know, I know you, the economics is what drives a lot of decisions because you're running a business and you don't go into business to trade four quarters for a dollar. Right. So, right. You, but this is the bottom line that, you, that I'm trying to get people to understand. Like if you can reach that market, it's way larger and there's dollars to be made there rather than competing with everybody else on these same, these same 15 or 17. It's the, it's the same dollar going back and forth. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just like that change I think is very scary for a lot of people. And um, I, I mean, I see why it's interesting the article because it did spark conversation. It sparked backlash for sure. And, I'm, and I know you heard about it. I mean, I heard about it. Um, so I know you definitely heard about it. Um, I heard about and, it. And, and, and the whole point was like, it's now it started a conversation and this is the conversation we're having today and hopefully this can help continue to spark this conversation moving forward about exactly how the business just needs to adapt and, and, and needs to realize this um, to not only be more sustainable for everybody but actually play a bigger role and 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 make people you know have a focus on health that's making people healthy and that's going to save in canada it's going to save our healthcare system in the u.s that means saving insurance dollars which drives insurance down which saves everybody money yeah you know, depending on the system itself um, because we know dollars spent on prevention save dollars on treatment it's funny for me because it's taken a long time with all the stuff that that i work on and trainer plus works on on the side of trainer plus to make fitness part of healthcare or, or a bigger part of the healthcare system mm. this the U S is more incentivized because it's the insurance companies that are paying for the treatment. So they've crunched the right. numbers and they've realized like, Hey, if we can get people moving and that's why you see like wearables, stream classes, subsidized gym memberships, they're becoming more and more prominent than insurance companies are pushing on their, their not just in group benefits, but also on the health insurance side in the U S. So you, you're seeing that churn, but it's not, it's not practically hitting the industry. Right. Did you enjoy that clip? You can check out the whole podcast on our YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to get more content on the future of fitness.